And that's what I think he'll be trying to do. Hatchinov is actually trying to force Nick to do a lot of physical behind the court work where he can't use his real firepower. Didn't play well in the ATP Cup. Slowly got a little better, but didn't find real clean hitting off his side of the court, the Russian. 30, 50. It's interesting, isn't it, Robbie? You walk onto a tennis court, there's two opponents there, but just the variables that come into play. So you've got a, you've got the different atmosphere, different environment. Since he was a lot different, the conditions now here, you've got this crowd that are actually on Nick's side of the court as well, playing the Russian. So his blinkers have to be on, and he's got to have some earmuffs on as well, just to sort of dial into his world. We obviously know that 14, 15. Nick has more ways to win points on this tennis court. And sometimes that can bring its own challenges when yeah. you have too many options. Yeah. That's nice one strike tennis from NK. Hashinov is a no-nonsense player. He will not hold back. If he goes down, he goes down swinging. He will make it physical. going to his the long. Nick's ball's interesting because through the air, there's not he hasn't got a lot of up and down, has he, on his backhand. So through the air, it probably looked like it was going to just continue on. Can you imagine what this place is going to sound oh. like when things get close? Still only in the second game. I like how, how the Russian does like to try and hold his baseline as much as possible. In the ATP Cup, Robbie One game on. Achenov was very much cross court. He wasn't, and I think he's got a. I think he can really use hit his backhand down the line quite well, and he doesn't. Didn't really open that shot up. I think tonight that's going to be really important for him to use that that access point and open open the, the tennis court up for himself. He played a fair few matches there because Russia did well and made it through to the semis. Ended up losing to the Serbian team. In fact, Dusan Lavic played one of the best matches I've ever seen him play on a hard court against Hashinov. There's plenty of matches coming into this event. Lost a very much informed Johnny Millman in Auckland. I saw that one. 
navigated his way to the third round here. It's got to be one of the best serves in the sport right now. Where do you rate it in all time? We can discuss that. I'll give you time to think about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, very well taken by the ball kid there. He took it very nonchalantly. Good stuff. That's a curious special. Where would you rank the Kyrgios serve, first and second, in the pantheon of great service? Again, what I've seen, he's in my top three. Who else makes it in there with him, Rog? Sampras at one. Mm -hmm. And I have Roger at two. Okay, so they're all pretty current, but it's what I've seen and... We've seen a couple of those <laughs> go in, in in our time, haven't we? Yep. I think in ice hockey they call that a slap shot. Yeah. We'll have to ask Daniela Hanchikova about that. That's her area of expertise. That's a ball I like from Hatchinov, that one down the line I think is really important. The other thing, the other issue he's got right here, when I say it's an issue, it's something that needs to be discussed from his team, is controlling the tempo of the way the match plays. Because when you play Nick, it all happens very quickly, especially on his side of the court. It's really important that you don't get sucked in to that speedy environment and just play with your, with your time. Keep it in your rhythmic space. It's what the greats do, don't they? Mm. Wonderful at controlling the tempo. Andre Agassi, when he started to get a bit of a lead, used to play just a little quicker, didn't he? Yeah. Rush you. I used to like my players if they, if they played that really heavily extended point and they had their opposition burning mm -hmm. get the and you're serving, get the balls and get up to the line. And we used to, I used to train, uh, train them in that space of actually being able to go and serve under a bit of heart rate fatigue so they can actually get on with things. It sends a message to the other side, doesn't it? You also can buy a free point. These guys will cheer at everything tonight. <laughs> that was uh, well taken in about the third or fourth row. Let's just discuss. I want to discuss this for our, for our viewers, Robbie, around the around the globe. Is that this court, as you said, it's a party court. It's where you can get some. You can have some walk-ons. You can also buy tickets. So it's a great blend of entertainment. If Nick wins this match, potentially, let's look ahead. Potential in the in the uh, crystal ball, he goes to potentially take on. We well, actually plays Rafa Nadal, who was outstanding today. That's at Rod Laver Arena, and that's a different ticket completely. There is no, it's not this type of atmosphere where it's all going on and it's a very much more, much more controlled and that hasn't been Nick's best performing court for that reason, I think, it has that different energy in the house.
nice from Hatchet. I'll just continue on that for one more second. So in his box is Leighton yeah. Hewitt. And Leighton loved the Rod Labour Arena crowd versus this type of environment. This is a bit too... Too much is going on outside. Too much distractions. Too much distractions. He wanted to... He liked the pureness of playing your opponent and the crowd getting involved at the times that were right. Fourteen, fourteen. Meaty blow. Just easy power. I mean, how good is it? We take it for granted when we look at it at serve. He can serve it wherever he feels he wants to. Curios in the end. You know, I was just getting back to your comments about Nick playing Rafa potentially if he does come through. The good news is, though, he's always up for the matches against Rafa, isn't he? So, irrespective of the fact it might not be the preferred stadium, Rafa brings out the best in him. All the legends in our sport currently still active have, haven't they? Too true. Defeating them all in his first meeting. I mean, that's an outstanding stat in its own right. It's mind-boggling, actually, when you think how young he was and how good they've been. And there's been great players that have not been able to beat them at all. The first time he beat Nadal, that was at Wimbledon 2014, of course. That's the one everybody remembers. Federer was Madrid the following year. In 2017, he played Novak for the Thank first you. time and beat him in Acapulco in one of the best serving displays he's ever had. And right now, he would like a good return display on this point. Because... It's the first break point he's got in the match. First blood. Not the shot I expected. 
but he got away with it nonetheless. Yeah, you were expecting that big, heavy ball where he just hits a clean winner from... But he, he, not, he noticed his player was behind the base on looking, at, looking like he had to defend because he was also... Hatchinoff was expecting the same ball. Always a sign of a well-constructed point when uh, you're hitting the winner at about 10 kilometres an hour. You've outmaneuvered the guy on the other side of the court. That's what it tells us. Simon, it didn't really go big on the second serve until the third set when it got a little shaky and things were a bit out of control there for him. Then he started popping that second serve big. Had a lot of control for the majority of the time. He's got, he's got quite long wingspan. Chinov, his big boy, covers the service box pretty well. Big hit from back there. Yeah, a little bit of hack spin on this one. I'm not sure it was completely clean, Rog, but he'll take it, right? Yeah, you got to take it. Nick's just holding it left. This but left buttock. Yeah. Buttock. Is it, how would you say it in your tongue? What's the correct terminology buttock? for it? No. Buttocks. <laughs> <laughs> Glutus maximus. Oh, right, that one. That's what it is. Oh, the more Maximus it is, the better, actually. That's, that's where you derive a lot of power from. It's not a good sign. He is limping around the back of the court. He's clutching right where the hamstring meets the glute. The beauty with Nick is he's got these weapons that he can just, he buys time with, doesn't he? Even if there is something that's just temporary. He didn't even get up for that surf. A push off, of course, the deeper you bend the knees, the more it engages. The glutes. It'll be worrying times for the Kyrgios camp. He's playing possum. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's always hard to know, isn't it? You just sort of sit and watch, be entertained.
Good improvisation. And that's what he's got, hasn't he? He's got so many skills available. He sees the ball very early. And he's got the hands to adjust. He's a tricky customer. not impacting him after the injury timeout. That was movement powerfully off both sides. He was right into it. He's more alert with his body. Please. Two set points, Kyrgios. Set. Second set. We're bringing out some old school S and V for good measure. So, the line umpire started to call. So, you need to challenge it. Mr. Kyrgios is changing the call on the left passer line. What was called out? It's a bit of confusion here. There was a call, a muted one. There shouldn't have been. So it will be a do-over because Fashion have got the ball back in play. Of course, the ATP Cup, we could have challenged that. Well, right now, he is uh, a one-man Hala reel in perpetual editing mode.
Yeah, I think they had, there were boundaries, but they were very flexible in their yeah, mind, weren't they, how far, <laughs> where they stretched to. Mm. It's, a, it's a great point you make. Richie McCaw, of course, one of the greatest All Blacks of all time. You know, they said, well, you're always pushing the offside rule, don't you know it? And he said, well, it depends on who's refing the game. <laughs> exactly. The tough thing, tough thing for the Russian is that he has one way of playing. It's it's a game which is modelled for him. It's uh, it's it's very rhythmic for the way he wants to play the game. It's uh, it's structured. Nick's very flamboyant. He's got different ways he can go to work here. That's hard for the opposition. They don't know what really is coming from that side of the court. Just like that, he steps up on the baseline. He's a metre and a half inside the baseline and just bunts it down the line with energy. You're caught for time. Oh, that is naughty from Nick. But very nice. <laughs> and I think that this is illustrating everything we've been talking about. Didn't know what shot he was going to play there. Was it drop shot? Was he? <laughs> and he then pushes it long. Still got one game point. He got to hold and stay close on the scoreboard, regardless of what's going on on the other end. So you know what happens in this situation, Robbie, is that you start to doubt your game. So you believe in your package, you go out there, and because of what's going on, the, the environment currently, you start to doubt your game. Shall I do this? Shall I do that? And it takes a very strong mind to just stay true to yourself right here. That has to be done. an important point there. Uh, Ashinov perhaps just got let off a little bit. First poor drop shot we've seen from Nick. And if I can go back to just backing your game in, Jules Simon in the previous round, he went out there with the mindset of, I'm going to just pit the ball cross court and try and rally, extend rallies as much as possible. And hopefully I win those and Nick eventually he gets annoyed, keeps getting annoyed. Well, he didn't win those and it was all Nick early in the match. And it was heavily weighted 75% towards Nick. Two sets to love down, he's continually doing it, and eventually Nick starts to lose a few, and a few things happen on the court, and then that number completely flipped on its head as they were leading going into the fourth set. So he stayed the course, is what I mean, with his mm. game. Waited for a few little cracks to turn up over time. Showing us that he's not only a powerhouse Hashinov.
15 to take. First little moment for the Russian. I say little because they, they can be stamped out pretty quick with this this serve. Uh... Frustrated there, but I think he's the kind of guy who will stay the course. The Russians, you know what they're like. They are a tenacious bunch. They compete very hard. The likes of Nikolai Davidenko, Mikhail Yuzhny. This latest generation, Marat was right up there. What a ball striker he was. Thirty fourteen. Well, well, well. First volley. Whether it was intentional or not, doesn't matter. Yes. I think it probably was. He's pretty smart. Nick, look at that. He just played, laid it off there, but to serve volley. The break point as well at 173. Kays, look at that. He, you knew he was going for a bit of inside out, Robbie. Mm, but it was the shortness that was so effective, right? If that carries deep, Hashinov has a good look at it. Yeah. And not snuffed out. Just what he would have wanted after making Kyrgios work hard on his serve. Quick hold from his side. Get the balls to next side of the court. Oh. Always keep your eye on the ball. With the duck, Robbie, you can't duck on a... Mm -hmm. the ball too yeah. early, didn't he? No, not good. Yeah. That was an unforced error. <laughs> Nick's slightly uncomfortable. Karen needs to be thinking, OK, I need to try and exploit this if I can get into the rally situation. I need to try and press him a little wide and see what's coming from his body. Yeah, just like that. Yep. And it's that side I'm looking for.
just get the feeling that Hashino is starting to pick a few more serves. Last service game of Kyrgios. Made some inroads, but couldn't break. Simon did that later in the match, especially on that first court down the middle. He started leaning down the middle on the first ball. There were two, two 20 plus serves just coming, bouncing back off his strings. Oh. Yeah. 13. Mm. He's been caught out there. That's why he's annoyed, just shaking his head. Looking for the kicker out wide. Got undone by the slider. It's like a, one of those good baseball pitches. Never know what's coming next. That's what I love about Kyrgios, his ability to, to improvise. Yes, he has team. got power, but when need be, he can shovel the ball back into the court. Thank you. Let's for service. It's better served like I If I was Hatch, I'm serving a bit more to the forehand side. Nick's backhand, he bunts it back, he gets it back at you, takes your time away, he's flat, he can, it's simplistic. The forehand's a little different and it gives you a bit of time if he, if he decides to take his racket back a little bit further than the bunt. And he can do that. <laughs> yeah, that's best but case scenario, isn't it? That's the best case scenario. 18, 18. Always an interesting decision. Do you keep playing the same weaker side all the time? When do you change it up? How often do you go to that well? Good Crazy hustle. good. Good hustle there. Great touch from Hatchinov. Has anything less than that he would have been gobbled up? And he would have found himself at two break points. And virtually two set points. It, that's an interesting discussion. Server versus returner. If you've got a great serve, do you just back your serve in all the time under pressure? Or if, even if the returner's got a great return on that side? I'd back on serving. There's Nick's backhand. That's the ability that he's got on that side of the court. He can step in. And with that ball, that's a bunt. That's barely taken the racket back. He accelerates it. And he can go off, which is, I think, 
one of his favourites, or he can pull it down the line. It moves anywhere. The backhand winner has given him a break point. Good bounce back ability. I mean, yes. muted applause at best. <laughs> Receiving that forehand winner. Oh, did you have to hit that winner? <laughs> They're saying? Seriously. Yes. Uh, you'd rather have this atmosphere as a player than no atmosphere, right? Oh, 100%. Every day. Great hustling. Both people locking in and actually just uh, just Got testing each other out there. They weren't going to go for anything extreme. Just going back to your here's the that's a 21 shot rally. Going back to your atmosphere. This is where you this is where you grow. Vachinov, this is like this is outstanding development. You now he's playing in a Davis sort of a semi Davis Cup fuel. This is where you find out the most about yourself. If you're going to win a major, if you're going to win those big, big matches at big times, this is the environment you want to go to school at. So some players, Robbie, this is unfortunate. It's done so well to get to break point, but there wasn't much love lost here at the end. Some players actually play better under these conditions as well. Those are the great ones, right? Yeah. They can actually turn it around and think that the crowd are actually for them. Well, you just have to look at one other Russian, right? Yeah. Danny Medvedev. Remember what happened in New York when he was given the crowd the ear and reminded them when they were booing him at the post-match press, uh, post-match interview on court, that their energy, their booing, made him play better. And he told them they must know that, that when they go to sleep tonight, it's because of them that he won. <laughs> Brilliant <laughs> stuff, wasn't it? And of course, uh, he did it on a second occasion. And then he bought it in the final against Nadal. Two sets to love down. And that's when he turned them around. Yes. He's hit that drop shot a lot of late. We saw it at the ATP Cup. And we've seen it a fair bit in the tournament thus far. Another long game. feeling that his legs have started to loosen up after the opening set. This is good agility from the big fella. Always a dangerous approach shot that inside in. Oh, stop it. Stop it. That's why Roger suggested you got to stay away from that backhand of Kyrgios because he can produce shots like that. Uh, 
I'd either be sliding forehand here down the tee or I'd be forehand body. So I... He was almost going to get the same reply, wasn't he? And Nick's just given him not sure whether it was in or out. More out than in. No, oh, it's in. Kyrgios will actually be disappointed that that one's got a piece of the line. What about starting this replay of the point with a second serve? That's what I think it should be. Mm -hmm. Me too. Always have. Yeah, we catch it. Big advantage to be able to reach over. into your locker and pull out a first surf. I've had that argument for ever since it was there because I just don't, I don't get it. Of course, the lawmakers will tell us, and I've had this discussion with them, that a point always begins with a first serve, therefore, that is the reasoning behind it. But my argument is the same as yours, Rog. That particular point actually started with the second serve. He's caught him. That's a great shot if he's got it, and the crowd was silent. In any other, any other arena, they would have gone nuts, because what a, what a shot if it's taken the back of the line. Got it up really quickly. And I think he has. A very annoyed crowd here in Melbourne Arena. He's worked so hard to hold serve, hasn't he? He may get a little moment. Oh. I think they're, they're too heavily orientated on his backhand side, which I think it just could do so much damage. I mean, it doesn't look as fancy as the forehand, but I mean, take a look at that. How, that, how effective is it? Yeah. Unbelievable. That's where I'd be going, though. And he doesn't need, doesn't need to peel the line, but I'd be going into the forehand pocket like that. Get the loopy, flighted forehand that Nick can give you. That was uh, Ashanov's wife. Just uh, sitting next to Freddie Rosengren there. Happy wife, happy life. Mm -hmm. Read uh, apologies for the colourful language. Fourteen thirteen. Yeah, wife Veronica. Of course, gave birth to their son David, born in September of last year. Bit, that one. We're on that line. 
You're calling it good, Robbie. Okay. You've just given me the good hand signal in here. <laughs> well, if it was on my side of the court, I definitely would have called it out. Yeah, no. But uh, I've got to be impartial here. And, um, your eyes are a lot better than mine. Yeah, not bad for a guy a bit older than you and a lot stronger than you as well. <laughs> <laughs> Sneak, good off the ball Little movement. Fifty no. Good comeback from Hatchinov. Been impressed with his. Demeanor staying extremely focused. It's been a real positive for him so far in the match. Hasn't been rewarded yet. Sometimes it takes a while. Oh, that is gorgeous. It's a slightly more abbreviated swing on this return. He's kept it compact. Well, it's just testimony to the timing he has. You know, you've been speaking about the fact that he's got so many tools in his locker. He also, I think, sees the ball extremely early. We don't talk about that, Robbie. We don't is talk about... You can teach, Rog. No, but we don't talk about... You and I may see the ball out of the... off the racket of an opponent at slightly different times, right? Yes. We never talk about the athlete who may just pick it up so much earlier that they feel like they've got time versus some that pick it up late. And we talk about the really, of a second. Yeah, and, and that's enough, isn't it? Yep. To make a decision. So, I think it might have been like good but so there's never been a study on that you know have we we haven't tested athletes to watch their how do they visualize how do they what's the, what do they see out of the lenses of their eyes it's a quite an interesting discussion I've always tried to have that discussion with is that not anticipation to a to a large degree or and some some may anticipate better Elevation sensation, but not the result he desired. We used to talk about. We used to talk about uh, when Andy Roddick was at his at his peak. I was talking about another coach. It was a local coach back in my city of Adelaide. About what do you think of his serve? And he used to love Andy's serve. And I said, "Oh, can you pick it? Can you see it?" And I said, "Well," and he couldn't actually quite read it till late. He said he couldn't really pick it. And I said, "Well, I'm actually seeing it a bit earlier than that." And and I said, "I've been out of." Put that in front of Leighton as well. So it's quite that's an interesting topic, isn't it? Because that's time. And if you can gain some time, some people may just naturally have that. Of course, Cheryl Calder. Specialist in South Africa, has worked with some of the best sports teams on the planet, worked with Ernie Els, and has a program called Eye Gym, where you actually train your eyes, Rog. And many of the best sporting teams around the world have used her. The likes Brian Habana, cricket players. Interesting. Oh, that's it. 
It's a great discussion, you know, you're always looking for that 1% here or there to make yourself better, aren't you? Not sure that can get much better. I think if we were assigning a serve value to that one, it would be right around 100. Outside edge of the line, all kinds of pace. That one's not coming back, and we'll give you a ticket to the party every day of the week. Disappointed, there's almost two new backhands in the net. A chance to apply a bit of scoreboard pressure. Not, not too many players in the world that can continually just step inside the baseline and and take time away naturally without affecting the way they play the game. the second set go to a tiebreaker because remember when they played in Cincinnati last year in the US summer opening two sets were decided by a breaker and the second set a very explosive one to say the least Interesting that one. It's a tough one, I think. He pounded that too, Nick. So it was a really good pickup if you hatch an and you got this right, Robbie. Oh, he's got yeah. it horribly wrong. <laughs> I think they call that Russian roulette. Lens.
15 love. Interesting little 10 or so minutes here. This could be, there could be a massive emotional shift one way or the other in this next 10 minutes. Kyrgios knows good feel when he sees it. Takes one to no one. Let's for service. Let's for service. Game catcher. It's just the kind of service game you would wish for going Both into a breaker. Okay. Mr. Murashid, you haven't got too much wrong this evening. It's a hard one, but he's been riding his bike uphill, hasn't he? The Russian for yep. an hour and a half, almost. He's got a moment now to... He's good enough to enjoy a bit of a different pathway. It's a perfect start. Gotcha. Well, I like that analogy you use because they say the road to success runs uphill. Oh, that's in easily. Easily. And you know what happened? Nick actually gave up on the shot. He hit it and sort of just stopped. And I think Hatchinov was watching and did the same, which was staggering that any player would do that. There's Nick, he pulled up, and so did his opponent. Wow. Twice in two games, Robbie? Three games? Unbelievable. Can't believe that. Good comeback. Give him credit because he could have definitely lost his way after that, because that's... But he went straight back to work. Loved it and got aggressive. This guy is qualified from the Nair Cup. That I can tell you. Ashenovel, just plug away. Doesn't get carried away emotionally. Nothing you can do about that. He will accept it and move on. It's a little off though, isn't it? Could have been 3-0. Yep. It's a different looking scoreboard. Still had to win that second point, but. It's good to tidy him up. You like that serve against the tall guys, don't you? Yeah, I love it. I think it's just a, I think it's a must go to ball in the in the current climate when the rackets offer so much with the ball on return when you cramp them up. Here they go. This is where they play their part, the home crowd.
Well, he's bringing the heat. Four, three, catch seven. Shading himself from the lights. This one just wipe its feet on the net. Yeah. Excruciatingly good that was. Ah. Oh. And right That's, back at you. Yep. Yeah. That was Final. exactly right. That was almost better that he was prepared to just go after that ball and go, I'm going to own this shot. Own this point off this one shot. That's courage. This is where it gets tricky. Shots apiece. It's fuming he's missed this. Six, five, Kyrgios with a golden Thank opportunity you. to take us two sets to Thank love you. lead. So it's interesting, Robbie. So two sets to love in the round before against Simon. Everything was under control. It was such a pure two sets. And then there was a little bit of showmanship going on and things started to slowly move away from what we saw for two sets. It'll be interesting to watch this first 10 or 15 minutes. Critical. And looking at what's ahead, you'd want to get off the court immediately, mm -hmm. wouldn't you? If you had a sale. And what Roger's talking about is Rafael Nadal. 
awaiting the winner of this one. First game in the third set. Talk about the quality of this match, Robbie. 37 winners to 20 unforced errors for Nick. And on the other side of the, the fence, it's 26 and 17. So both players in the positive. And we didn't really need to look at those to understand. The pitchers tell themselves. And it's hard, Robbie. You're in the coach, coach's box now, right now, of Karanachanov. And what are you telling him? What it, it's, it's, to me, it's just more of the same. Because what are the other options for him in his, in his game, to be honest? He's got to probably just wait, see if he can wait the cause to get an opportunity. He did have a couple in that second set. say a couple he had one break point but a few little moments where he had a 15 13 there could have been a conversion to that five all rally in the tiebreaker when he misses the backhand cross court it's a good overall excellent overall from Reno
15-13. Would have been nervous there. Nick had a full purchase on that. He's generally pretty good with that ball. You can get it across the front of you pretty quick. And it was actually a pretty smart option, wasn't it? Because if he had have gone deep into the towards the baseline, Nick gets a swing at him. Mastermind shows? Or, you know? <laughs> no, no, rubbish at that. Oh, yeah? Okay. I'll have a go at Trigger oh. Pursuit, though. I think you'd be all right. He's knocked the fluff off their return. That's a boomski. Talk backhands down the line, you talk Novak. You know, you like probably Andy Murray had a great backhand down the line. It's the Aussie, it's, you know, we, we start talking ratings. I mean, mm -hmm. that shot up the line, and he, and he can, he hits it and it gets a bit of inside, inside out going as well. It's pretty flat. It's a pretty scary shot. It's a sneaky good shot, oh, isn't yeah. it? And what makes it good is it's the contact point when you're on the other side is so different to his forehand, isn't it? Yeah. Backhand stays about, what, a foot off the ground, whereas the forehand has got so much work on you, you're hitting it like five feet above the ground. favorite backhands of all time to rival Novak's was a, a young man from Argentina. Insanely good backhand. Double-hander. Caused Roger Federer a lot of problems. Guillermo Carrier. Junior oh. days. Oh. 
Correa's was good, but not in the same league as this guy's. He caused my player a lot of trouble as well, Leighton Hewitt, David <laughs> Nalbandian. He certainly did. Could he play the game of tennis? Wow. Freddie Rosengren. Trouble. This, this is an important game. This charge needs to hang on here. Wasn't going to change things up. Hashinov had to do what he does better. It's not the case in this game. Some unforced errors. The upside for Kyrgios is three break points. He set that one for six. He knows these are virtual match points. That's a good answer, isn't it? What a response. Ping the ball 15, 14. almost out of the stadium. Well, he didn't really try to get out of the stadium. It was pretty high. Gets a warning, prepared to get the warning. He understands that that's going to come with a warning, so he's not really impacted by that. And then he plays a big point. I like that. Still two break points for Kyrgios. because you're actually happy when the crowd's going up and about all the rest of the time and but you know what I mean well as well as swearing pretty loudly it came across yeah on our courtside microphones Apolo apologies for the language he's got away uh, with a code violation there correct because that was directed at the fans yeah and it was loud He pays the ultimate price. Oh, he'll be energized by that break. Good footwork. Nick doesn't get enough credit for her wall. Excuse me, how deep he consistently hits the ball, Rog. Yeah. Those two shots there, testimony to that. the reasons he can live with Nadal from the back of the court when they play one another and of course he's just three games away from that happening let's just see whether that has any effect I mean he's he's up there's obviously it just shows there's still a lot of tension regardless of the score line attached to it Achinov could win the next point. Which you can't. But I, think when you're, I think when you're turning on the fans when they're all here to support you, I don't know whether that's, you know, that's healthy, Not a good is it? Idea. But, which is, looks like what's happening. Here's a nice way to do it as well. Yeah, know. for sure.
14-15. We've never doubted how impressive his tennis is, his shot making, his ability to take the racket out of opposition's hand. It's just doing it for duration. And tonight he's been pretty much all that. Yeah, he's hardly blinked. Uh, I've been on court for almost two hours now. Enough of that game. That's solid. Of course, if Kyrgios goes on to win, Raj, we know who his opponent is in the next round. Yeah, Rafa Nadal, who looked rather smooth today too, got got through his first couple of sets really quickly and cleanly. And isn't that an appetising mouth watering? <laughs> Round of 16. For a host of reasons, Rob. <laughs> we, we could keep writing the list down, but... Yeah, it's look. spicy. There's and no love lost between the two. No, in 2019, there were some couple of real interesting outcomes, weren't there? Yeah. Both Acapulco and Wimbledon. That's nicely done. Yeah, and Acapulco, remember, Kiros had to save... Match points before eventually prevailing 7-6 in the decider. And that was that, that's a humid. I know been there a couple of times, had a couple, been lucky enough to have a couple of wins with both two different guys, Grigor and Garmon Fees. And that's heavy conditions, great tennis conditions, but heavy conditions at night. Nice touch. Hard to hit the ball out, so there's heavy rallies as well. And so for Nick to get through that, as you said, he save match points and the other was Wimbledon and that was a big build-up wasn't it oh, it was Nick started that one at the pub the night before <laughs> oh. Oh. have here these have been 15, like hen's teeth for Hashinov well he must have been listening to us talking about the next match of Rafa because he's gone hey I'm not done yet with I'm not done yet that backhand winner has gotten him two break points Perfect storm. 
just what Hashinov would have wanted to irritate Kiriosa. Complete shank return. And to do it on break point. And to get the break off of it. This is this is where we hear. Do we hear the chatter come up? Yeah, saying deja vu. I mean, know why he's saying that, right? Yeah. yeah. So when they played in Cincinnati last time, he was shouldn't say all over Hashanov, but he had the better of him. He won the opening set, and it was Hashanov who squeaked out the second and went on to win the third comfortably. And the fact that Nick uses the words déjà vu, it's not ideal, is it? No. First back, there was a back end rally ball that went halfway up the net. That return going a fair way long. And that one halfway up the net. So the, the commentary matched up with the data says a fair bit doesn't it with the outcomes says a fair bit gives you some interesting data So late and hit a shot like this. <laughs> Not many have, have they? Roger? Yeah. Has done it a few times. Fourteen He's just telling himself he needs to close this game out sooner rather than later. He was feeling fatigued. Kiros has just thrown him a lifeline, and he knows it. I think he's buoyed by what's happened in the last few minutes. Almost walking to the chair at 40-15. Unforced errors, just broke. Different challenge right here. Great response. for this to be a real tipping point in the match. been good hasn't he outside of the ball that he's built it not much has changed throughout the course of his campaign out here tonight
It's great tennis IQ and an even better imagination. I know this is not what Hashinov wants, but it could actually work in his favour. In fact, it is close but not quite there it could just raise the Aussies frustration levels even further I believe he wrote it uh, because he was inspired by John F. Kennedy's daughter, Caroline. Did she get any royalties for that or not? Mm. Not a clip, no clip of the ticket there. Not sure. <laughs> not sure. <laughs> not sure she needed it. <laughs> Good little push here from Hatchnov was out of this game at 40 love. Falls attached to that one. Five games on. Again, the depth of Kyrgios's ground strokes. Very impressive. signaled out as well. Ah! <sighs> 
That's a hell of a ball. It is. 14-15. He's vaporised that forehand. Completely committed to it. Depth, width, and plenty of pace. Yeah, That was a great shot there, wasn't it there? Good hustle from Hatchinov to be able to get one and then the second ball back. Didn't get rewarded, but still asked the questions. That pays you back somewhere down the line. someone from his team to acknowledge was it in or out shall I challenge I think they're a little tight <laughs> Robbie what do we say yeah we say challenge and it's wrong does it create an eruption so I think they just sat on the fence yeah it's dead Absolute beauty. Hasn't got a lot of court to work with there, but precision of that strike is right out the top draw. Just puts him ahead in the backhand winners category. And that says something because Nick's been striping his backhand today. Good job, Achinov. He's, he's actually decided to reverse a little bit on the return. And he's starting platform there. And he's actually been able to make a couple of the returns for some pressure. Wasn't far off. This, that's the figure we can never put a stat on, can we? Or a number to the tension. What value is it? What is it? What's it doing inside? We don't know what it does to different people inside. But there's tension, obviously, right here. Nick's two sets of love up. He knows he's not far away from the the locker room. Incredible volley. 
for someone as big as him to get his eyes that low speaks volumes. Nothing wrong with that return. It's all hands to the pump for Kyrgios in this game. in the mood. I'm not sure he understands the that scoring DJ system. DJ play music then. <laughs> what is going on there? Talking about losing you. it. That was an unforced error of the pass <laughs> order. That's a winner. And uh, this is the sixth set that these guys are contesting, uh, Rog. Fourth oh. tiebreaker. I'm still baffled that the DJ <laughs> went loud with the, with the tunes. Thought it was okay. They'll be on the edge of their seats. Not because they're getting ready to get up, because they're not sure what might happen to their charge next. Two zero. Catch that. Well, he had a good start in the tiebreak, didn't he? In the in the previous one. Now he has a real opportunity. Does Nick go big here? Real big, which we've seen plenty of times. <laughs> Outstanding ball striking. Under pressure, Two, this one. ball here. Look at that rifle gotcha. out of the the barrel, and then all the options opened up for him. And as you said, to do it under pressure, that's what matters in sport, Rog. It's the only thing that matters. be a game changer. Just in a tennis match, he can he can control the momentums. He can just change a momentum swing with one shot, and he could seemingly just change his mindset as well. Yeah, you know, he's gone from being ultra negative to hitting two shots, and he's jumping towards his chair. Yeah. Thank 
Here he comes. That's good ball, ball strike from both players, but it just shows the value of the back end down the line. Here's the one that changes the game. If you can get it down there with some depth and some penetration, it pays you big time. It is the biggest money ball in our game, I think, if you've got access to it. I think both lines are, but uh, that was a beauty. Yeah, it's just kept us in the back burner. What a time to bring them out. That one did not deviate on its path. A ball struck ball never does. miss hits the ball off that ball you think oh, I might have hit the line and skid it on but I think this one was clearly long Five, four. Gatsana. Mr. Gatsana has two challenges on Say fortune favours those that are brave. So John Millman uttering those words to himself yesterday evening when he was down match point. Be brave. of enthusiasm for this one and rightly so thank you please Six. so one match point has come and gone First time I've actually ever heard a DJ get involved in the tennis match during the game. It's quite unusual, isn't it? Or Do you like it? it? I don't mind it, but I know, like it given the uh, given the atmosphere it. we got it here. Adds, no, it doesn't bother me. Yeah, I think it adds to it. I'm just saying I have, we haven't really seen it, mate. No, but. definitely haven't heard it wumbled it.
Thank you. Please. One match point saved. Six all, third set tiebreaker. Oh, wow. I mean, did, did that hit the throat of the racket? I, I think, think it, it did. did. Seven, six. Wow, wee. Well, you pay for the whole racket. You yep. might as well use it. He, he could have had butted that over for the win. And I hope we see it again because that definitely did not take strings, I wouldn't have thought. No. But it's given him set point. We might have to come back to that, Rog. Oh. It's a set point now for Hashinov. Oh. Is it 170 serve or is it 200? Well, perhaps it will be deja vu all over again. Just for reference point, if you weren't with us a little earlier, both players have had a code violation, both hitting the ball out of the court. Any transgressions will be a point penalty. Thirty fifteen. Oh, Kiros has been saying that with a little bit more regularity of late. Yeah. Those backhands down the line. 
And these raking forehands starting to do some serious damage. You can feel the lull, you can feel it in the fans. That's a splendid evening. It looks calm out there, but I tell you what, it's a cauldron inside here. It was big. And a good call. Beauty. Thank you. He's made it. No challenge forthcoming. Just to irritate the living daylights out of me. I tell you who did this to me a couple of times. You'll know him well. Jeff Tarango. Did he? Oh, yeah. Knew it was going out. Give the old air shot. And you're coming back and you're going, yes. oh. And he's just taken a couple of kilojoules of energy out of you. Game game. Giving you false game hope. Two games to one. Yeah, too true. He is a tough individual on the court and a gentle giant off it. Pretty good role modelling around that mm -hmm. with him as your father. He's just giving Nick a taste of his own medicine here, isn't he? Most players with better feel off that backhand side. Yeah, that's Two games off. Different looking ball game now, isn't it?
Fifteen. So nice to be able to call on a serve like that. Yes, it's come back. But he's wanting that point. Nine and a half times out of ten. Too good. Not sure if it was the best selection to go cross court here from that spot. Probably needed to rifle it up the line. But at least he's covered the cross court pass there. Yeah. That was a guess. Not you know. Done a great job, hasn't he? He's taken care of a lot of games quite simply. When I say simply on the scoreboard, he's got himself ahead early on the scoreboard. And that's a big help when you're playing Nick. Volleys, isn't it? It's the simple. He knows where that ball goes. Where was the old school? Where were we taught to volley with that volley back in the day, Robbie? Deep. Wasn't it? You, I don't know about you, but you're taught to volley it all, all the time, volley deep for a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. Now it's. Yeah, that short one's so effective. Uh, uh, there yes. we go. Here we go. 15, 13. Things. This is where the ability to stay involved and keep your head in the game. Come back to reward you. Here's a little moment. He's got enough on it. 15 and 14. I mean, that, that was outstanding movement. Six foot six. I mean, he's like a panther across the court, isn't he? And then gets pace on the ball. Two break points. Oh, that looks 
exchange there between Nick and Karen because this one actually gets hit down into the corner. I think Nick's looking for the own up on the not up. See the topspin bounce. And you see, into the ground. They don't come much easier than that, do they? Off a second serve. Big point. We've seen a fair few slow second serves from Nick. I saw 137, a 138 to 141. That was a 145 kilometre an hour. important of that hold. It's not an easy shot to pull off. Beautiful flight to the shot rash. Had a lot of safety attached to it, didn't it? These moments at 40-30 on Hatchinov's serve seem bigger than the 40-30 point on the Kyrgios serve for him to look after. Points like this are worth the admission fee on their own. How's that for athleticism? These guys throwing everything at it. Oh, 
and then Nick applauding him eventually. Great point. He knows how well crafted that one was for a piece. This is a good approach, he, great return. Probably didn't get all the direction you want to, but the way Nick can get it back past you quick. It's a bullet, it's flat, it's fast, it's got some direction and angle. This is not quite Becker-esque, but it's Kyrgios's version. <laughs> Just add a little sugar on what probably was a pretty simple shot. Great stuff. work in the point before and then this point now to get to that stage not sure you should have gone there because right now the contest has got physical a lot of balls in play extended rallies they're going after it and the serve clock is down to three seconds two seconds and he's he's gonna I get it That's all I said. Why are you stupid? Can you not see? Well, take it back then. Why do I get a time violation? My hand's bleeding. for blood. That's when he's rolled on the court. You should be allowed to, to stop. But of course the protocol is you go and show it to the umpire first, straight away. Yeah. And to his defense, he didn't see that, so he just assumes that was time being taken. Let's call that a communication mm -hmm. disconnect. Which is never good. It's never good when you lose Wi-Fi, is it? No. for the language yeah and it's lucky the umpire did not hear that because that would have also got a 
violation, code violation. So remember, time violations are separate to code violations. They sit, sit in a different category. Big, big moment. Brought out his big weapon. It's going nuts in here. 22 aces. Two big guys use the drop shot very effectively tonight. As much firepower as they possess. They've got some decent touch too. And another game, Robbie, at 40 Love. Doing a really good job, the Russian. Taking away any tension on his serve. <laughs> oh! A thing of beauty. Five games off. Watch Kyrgios here. He has no idea where this backhand's going. He leans cross court. And he's left flat footed. Impressive game. Five apiece. Probably worth a challenge at five all. I mean, you've got three, burn one. And that first serve of the first point just boys at Hawkeye telling us it was just out yeah it was indeed worth the challenge He's missed that one. So much easier to make that than miss it. Point from both guys. The hustle. Four the field. 15. Just enough there with the top spin lob, isn't he?
four points too late. I think this one's in. This one's got a little piece of the line. Yes! 99% out. Is 100% in. That's great play. What a good ability to recognise what's happening up the other end. Saw that Nick right here had slipped over, was following in it, and really closed quickly. Disappointing there he was. Needed to engage that job, especially when you're ahead on the scoreboard there. Just to build that pressure of saying you throw the blow. Ks, but it actually looks faster, doesn't mm. it? It's just because it gets to A to B in a flat trajectory. Now, once again, it'll be a tiebreaker to separate these two. This will be the seventh set. That they've contested against one another. And it'll be the fifth tiebreaker out of those seven sets. Nip and tuck. Oh, he picked the surf. He was on it early. What does that subconscious mind tell you, Roger? What's your gut feel as to who's going to come out on top in this tiebreaker? Does it all end here, or are we going five? I feel we're going five because I just... I think the vibe in here almost wants it. I think they want that theatrical final set that... Hey, I'm... I think bit. they wanted to go five, but they want Nick to win in yeah. five. <laughs> yeah, it's a dangerous game to so play, isn't it? I think we're going with the same. Well, I'm going with the five. It's a pretty good start getting there for the Russian, isn't it? Held his two serves. Gotcha. Three hours, 21 minutes. Physical man who's sitting back. I'm sure they're all watching it too. The Nadal clan. Team Nadal. Yeah, I'll be happy for this one to go to five. Oh, yeah. Well, it's gone three and a bit. Three and a half hours. Pretty good anyway. Oof, that's big.
out wide. It was big, and the young ball girl did a great job of just deflecting that, taking it on the body. Strong. Pick that serve as well mm -hmm. through them. Was leaning down the middle. It's a 136 kilometer an hour second serve. We don't see that too often, Rash. No, it's unusual, isn't it? Because we've we've generally seen the one that's gone the other way, haven't yes. we? And we haven't seen that all night where there's been that express. It's almost it's two first serves he puts in. First mini break. Miss your first serve, you don't get access to the return being off pace, and then you're in a battle. It's a little basketball, isn't it? We're throwing a bit of basketball in the tennis arena. Curious, I love that. Big Boston Celtics fan. Would love the discipline of Bill Russell right now and the mental fortitude. Isn't it? He served 76% of first serves in for the set, Hatchinov. And two of the biggest moments, back to back, he couldn't find them, Robbie. Thank you. as well went 182 when he was 4-3 up. So many times we just normally see him go bomb. Not going to give you a play on the ball. Great return again, good depth, but this ball here, he rifled that from a low trajectory. Have a look at this at this level here, below the net height, that up and down, outstanding, great visual. Missed his last three first serves. Anybody in the world 
that's playing on the tour would have decided to play that shot at that moment. That's what makes Kyrgios box office right there. Frozen rope of a backhand. Speaking of big time place on big time points. That's impressive. He's been he's taken some heavy blows at Chinov and he's getting spoken to strongly by his group. Freddie Rosengren has seen it all before. He knows how big this point is right now. Set point. Well, he gave away that wide one a little bit because he was slightly looking for the one down the middle and uh, the location wasn't brilliant, but it was good enough, wasn't it? I guess that is the toughest serve for a right-hander, isn't it? Out wide yeah. on the ad side, you're going over the highest part of the net. You're hitting a little flatter. It just shows you how good Kyrgios the serve is to be able to produce that kind of swing. Where was the DJ on the change of ends? Yeah, even he's, Too much en tension. he's engrossed. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't get the right tune out. Remember, Kyrgios has had a match point already Please. in the previous tiebreaker. Three and a half Please. hour mark. It's match point number two for Kyrgios. Wow. Seven all. Not an easy shot for Hatchinov to play the first one off the return. He had to come forward. It was an off pace ball. Had to hit it to a position where he knew there was. His opponent was going to have a play and a good play at it. Great stuff. This is why we lace them up. Eight, seven, That's a party point. Try that again. I put my teeth back in, Rash. Party spoiler of a serve. I well, mean, that has muted the crowd. There were about seven claps in the stadium. I mean, and that was a massive serve at, the, at that moment. Everybody on tender hooks here. Set point number two for Hashanov. Does he finally go big here? I'm doubting it. on Melbourne Arena. So we refresh, Robbie. Let's put it where it sits now. This, we're one set shootout. This opening here after you've won the fourth for 
Hatchinov is really important. He's got to keep himself up so he can play at the level and take care of business in this very first game. He's just done that as well. So he can't have a he can't have a flat. You know, he can always have an emotional lull. But those two points there, well that point in particular, the way he finished, seems like he's still in the space. Worth noting that Hashinov has come back from two sets to love down once before. That was in Wimbledon 2018 against Francis Tiafo. Boy, what a comeback it was. One sets four and five, six, two, six, one, Rash. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. Bit of a different opponent and different environment. Gives himself an opportunity to do that all the time because he has a great, great ability to stay in the moment, stay yeah. between the lines. Great attitude, right? Yeah. And your attitude determines your altitude in life. Yeah. Ah. Ah. Good, start. Good start. First game in the final sense. But of course. How much is fatigue going to play a part in this one? After going a 4 hours and 34 minutes with Michael Ema in his previous round. Won a match tiebreaker there, 10-8. I mean, look at that body language. Big. 13 love. It's the beauty about his game as well because even if Nick Kyrgios had a little bit of fatigue going on, he has the ability to just fire him out and hit winners at will. Good record in five setters too. Let's not forget that playing at the majors. I think five and two. On his last one against his fellow countryman, Jordan Thompson. I'm sure you might remember that one at Wimbledon. Yeah. fans texting me they're saying remember his last one here against Andrea Seppi yeah of course that's when we had advantage sets that one going 10-8 in the fifth to Seppi on that occasion yeah. and if memory serves it was on this court yeah I was courtside commentating on the court 
of that match and Seppi just stayed around, stayed around. Didn't have the firepower of Hatchinov. Yeah, but he had the ability to stay. Mm. Start to cramp at the end of his match against Ema two evenings ago. I'll have to keep an eye on the movement. It's funny that as you get into the fifth set the early points in everyone's service games sort of dictate the, emotion, the way the game's played, if you know what I mean, like the energy in the game. If you're the returner, you get that first point, all of a sudden it's, it's on, like there's, there's tension in the air. If it goes the other way, everyone's a little bit, okay, it's going to play in. Two cheap mistakes. 15 and 13. That is an outstanding tennis point. Great hustle from Nick. Curious to keep that alive, but the, the depth, the forehand approach, then the volley deep inside out into the base on that one there. That was almost one that got him in trouble. is looking very good now. Oh. I'd be disappointed about that. That ball needed to stay engaged. First point of the fourth service game here, Robbie, and he would like to take that one back, I think. Nick was playing this back to him after this trainer. Take a look at this. Yeah, I'll hit it back to you. Almost. <laughs> Appreciating the effort. Come on. Oh, he is ready for him this time. 
A cheeky underarm serve. Hashinov was not going to have any of that. It's one of the birds is just left a mess on the court. They've got some big seagulls that fly around here. Yeah, well, <laughs> why would they drop in and uh, enjoy the action? Huh? I mean, you don't want to miss out, do you? No. here in the fifth. Both players with excellent five set records. Haven't played a whole lot of them, but the ones they've played have been very good. Five set is at the majors. Curioso, very healthy. Five wins and just two losses. That's great movement forward. This man, four wins, two losses. You know what the Russians done as well? They are good statistics. He's, he's understood that there's a bit of fatigue around, so there's not as... Nick's not been able to cover the ground exactly as pure as he was at the start of the match, so he's been stepping in. Like that, looking to come forward. Just outstanding shot making. The fact that he's gone from drilling backhands and forehands to then hitting a drop shot like that. It's good stuff. Language you want to see if you're hashing off on the other side of the net. Sorry, PM. <laughs> Feels like 11 a.m. the next morning, doesn't it? We've been here so long. Didn't quite make sense, <laughs> but anyway, everyone knew what I was talking about. again he has feathered this
Well, he'll be happy that a fair few of those serves didn't come back. Because Hershonov has definitely done a good job of making more and more returns off this guy's serve. And return serves in the opening set was as high as 50%. That's a lot lower now. He had him. And I'll tell you, on Hatchinov's side of the court, his directional hitting has been outstanding. When he's had the opportunity to get access to a full hit on the ball, he's been so accurate. Just like that. He's 18th for the match, 28 for Kyrgios. Again, Robbie. We're going to hear the scoreline on his serve. And we've heard that over and over, haven't we? Well, in this set, he has been exemplary behind his serve. Only lost three points, Rash. Two on the first, one on the second. If you are tuning in for the first time, where have you been? Curious with a two sets to love lead. But the Russian has just reeled him in bit by bit. Two match points have come and gone for the Australian. be said Kyrgios has done well in this deciding set not to get too down on himself 100 percent well said <laughs> he's also had the challenge of coming from behind as well on sir coming up and walking out serving oh. trailing by one and like Hashinov. He too has only lost three points on serve thus far. Oh, wow. The pickup was outstanding. 40, 50. dynamic of the point change. Kyrgios goes from dominating it or being in charge of it to being behind the eight ball. First time he said that real flighted Ace. return back. Ask Nick the question.
Test mentally for him after being up 40-love in the game. Yeah. Remember on a few occasions now, he has been able to call upon that serve just when he needs it. Rafael Nadal is doing right now. Is he keeping an eye on this one, Roger? He's either having a meal and they'll have a look at it later, or he'll be told, I'm sure. He could heck, could you not? You. You'd have to watch a little bit, wouldn't you? I would think so, especially yeah. now. If he was having dinner a little earlier, he's just tuned in once he's seen it go to a fifth set. Yeah. Here's the targeting that you were talking about. Look at that. Yep. That is right where Freddie would have put the cone down. Tight to the line. Make sure you hit it, young man. Good call, young lady. That's outstanding. 14. No play on it. Nick hit that ball. It was a tough ball to deal with again. Again, a low ball. Look at that. Once again, Robbie, 40 love. No. Here we go. Ooh, oh, wow. That's a big, quick call there. And if that's in, they'll be replaying that point. She's done well to see the ball bounce because Nick was all over it. Oh, what a ball brilliant ball. call. Absolutely. 15 level. Top work. Mentioned he saved two match points. I just forgotten, Rash, that not that long ago, I should not say five match points in the first round of Moscow just a, a couple of months ago against Philip Kohlschreiber. 
That, of course, the Kremlin Cup. Can you imagine how well that went down at home? That's a great shot. Gives him some breathing room here. That's shaping the ball. Well, this time he doesn't let the 40 love scoreline get away from him. Five games off. Shuts the gates on the tenth game. We do keep call it Super Saturday. Thank you. Bobby, don't we? Please. And rightly so. Yeah. Thank you. His ball striking has been outstanding. It's been those linear strikes. Yeah. Both sides. Started with the backhand, got that thing dialed in. Oh, he's complimenting it with a forehand. Same script. Plus so three points on serve for the match. I'm oh, sorry, for this set. I'll tell you what. Kyrgios has lost six, so that's just as impressive, but... Really making a healthy contribution to the bushfire relief fund. 21 aces now for Hashinov, 31 for Kyrgios. It's the first time he's dialed that in for the match. What a time to do it. Hashinov wants a, a change of racket. He's just walked over to the bench and picked up another one. Second match in a row, Kevin Hashinov. We'll play a 10-point match tiebreaker to try and cement his place in the next please. round. First to 10 by a margin of two.
a first time. It looked like there was a bit of restriction on movement there. Normally he's been very good at Chinoff to get to that ball. That ball was coming in towards him as well. You want to know how good Nick has been in deciding set tiebreakers, Rash. He's won the last seven in a row. That's unbelievable. That's impressive. Crowd at fever pitch. Hatchinov missed a couple of points, changed his racket. Hasn't won a point since. Oh, what a start. It is the perfect start. That's the kind of volley you were talking about, getting the eyes down onto the level of the ball. Thank you, please. Thank you. Big point, tough shot under the circumstances, handled well. He's won his last three in a row as Hashinov. Deciding set tiebreakers. I mean, you've got no room to maneuver. At least with the 10 point match tiebreaker. If you do fall behind, you've got time to catch up. We saw it with Roger Federer yesterday against John Millman. Down 8 4. Went six points on the bounce. Curious as dad urging him on. Sort of feeling that it was going to be big. <laughs> Does he go again? top shelf every day of the week the slice that he played up the line this one here outstanding for a bit of change and then I'm finishing it with that point wow what a switch in momentum four points on the bounce for the Russian Making. Great rip spin around the side of this forehand. And 
may be down. But one thing we know about Hashinov, he is not out. Symmetry, and you're a Hashinov fan when he played Philip Kohlschreiber and Moscow Rash and saved those five match points. He ended up winning it in a deciding set tiebreaker. He hasn't saved that many here, but he saved two already. Fida Rosengren looking a little tense. say in this part of the world. Six, five, yep, eight. absolute highest quality. Got it at its apex and did not hesitate in drilling that down the line. Thank you. You got to feel like it's just about the serve, isn't it? When you get it, it's your first. You hit your first serve. You're a fairly good proposition of winning the point at the moment because you get access to control that ball that comes back most times. Both players have been exemplary when they've landed their first serves in this deciding set. Hashinov, he's only lost three points. Nick four. So yes, they'll pay good money for a couple of first serves from here on in. That, that emotion from Hatchinov where he's yelled out, given a come on. They know the significance of winning that second serve. Now Nick's going to do the same here. Break it's first to ten, folks, by a margin of two. Turner serve. Yeah, he was on it, wasn't it? 200, 218. Lent over there, and then you could see him. He was trying to spread the court. Well, it's on his racket, Robbie. Oh! 
stuff from Kyrgios. In your life, have you ever seen anything like this, kid? I mean, that's crazy. You just get, you sit back in your chair, got behind it. But that's one thing, pulling the trigger and delivering it to perfection. Thank you. That's the money. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, thank you. No pressure, no diamonds. Four hours and 26 Thank minutes. This one has been ongoing. Almost two hours since his last match point. Match point number three, Nick. He's done it! Kyrgios wins an epic on the Melbourne Arena. He defeats Karen Hashanov in five scintillating sets. 6-2, 7-6, 6-7, 6-7, 7-6 in a match tiebreaker.